Hello everyone, I am Crunchy Scott, and today I am putting this Valentine's Day themed mini waffle maker by Dash to the test. What I'm gonna be doing is instead of making waffles, I am going to make a sugar cookie, a Valentine's sugar cookie, of course. I am using Sweet Lauren's. These are plant-based cookies and they are delicious because I wanna keep this all vegan. These are about four bucks and this mini Dash waffle maker was about $13 at Target. And I'm hoping that together they will make a nice Valentine's Day connection. So why am I doing this apart from the whole viral aspect of cooking something that's not a waffle in a waffle maker? Well, I am down eight glorious pounds here in the new year and I'm trying to keep that train moving that way. And the idea of having a dozen freshly baked cookies in my house is really scary, but one delicious cookie is just right and I deserve it. And I also wanna figure this out so that you can also make a Valentine's Day cookie that's really special for your own valentine here is a nice close-up of our waffle maker i love this pink color it's just so beautiful it's one of my favorite shades of pink now before i plug it in i just kind of wanted to show you everything um, it's really small you can see that's the size of my hand not that I have huge hands. And on the inside, you can see the indents that will make the actual waffle little impressions that are usually just the little square cup. And you can see their cute little X's and O's. And oh my gosh, I don't think I realized they're not just X's and O's, they're X's and hearts. That's so adorable. Man, that's so cute. Okay, so it's gonna be about four inches in diameter, which is what it says on the box, which I think makes a good size for a, a size waffle for a kid. I would say I would probably eat two waffles. It is the perfect size for a cookie though. A four inch cookie is a really good size cookie. So I'm gonna plug it in. I have a feeling you're not gonna be able to see this, but the blue light comes on when the contraption, the contraption, the waffle maker is heating up. And when the blue light goes off, then that means it's ready to rock and roll. So you probably can't see it, but the blue light is on. It is heating up. There's some warmth there. So um, I do have my cookie dough sitting out on the counter here for about 10 minutes um, just to kind of warm things up. I don't want to put something cold in there and try and force down the, the top lid. So I've let it um, warm up to room temperature. And I actually also shaped it into a nice little disc here just to see if the cookie would make a nicer shape inside of the, wa the waffle maker. Um, I think Eventually, it's gonna make it. We're gonna need maybe one, one and a half, or two of these little cookie dough um, scoops. But I think we have to do a sacrifice first. We have to do one and test it out. The light is off. This is heated, and let's go ahead and put our cookie there in the middle. Oh, I've heard a little sizzle. How cool is that? Hopefully, since I'm closer up, you can see the little X's, hearts, and O's a little bit better. Okay, close this baby up, and you don't need to necessarily force it down. I have no idea how long this is gonna take. I think I'm gonna check it after like two or three minutes because, you know, it's direct heat. I think the actual instructions of the oven are like eight to 10 or 12 minutes, something like that. This is direct heat on both sides, so I think it's gonna cook a little bit faster. I will say, whenever I use a waffle maker myself, I use some spray. Um, and I see a lot of people online doing that. I did not do that for this one. We will see how it goes. Um, if it sticks a little bit, we'll use spray for the next one because I plan to make a bunch of these so we can um, test out and see the best way to make something, make a cookie and to make maybe a Valentine's cookie too. We'll, make, we'll be creative with this dough. It's been about five minutes and I actually unplugged it because it smelled like it was starting to burn and there it is. And it definitely smells burn to me so to me this is a fail oh it's all crumbly oh gosh this is a mess <laughs> fail so well first of all i probably should have waited to it's definitely burnt okay it's definitely releasing easier once i opened it that's good you know um, underneath here it might be that vegan cookie dough just doesn't work well in this but i will i mean this is our first try we're going to try again um, so what I will do is I will scrape all this out. That was a one inch, um, uh, sorry, not one inch, one ounce ball of cookie dough. I'm wondering if a two ounce ball would maybe do a little bit better because it would spread more evenly and cook more evenly. So we'll try that next. But yeah, this is gonna be fun to get out. So unplugged, I'm gonna let it cool down and then I'll pop this stuff out and we'll keep trying. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. I have just spent the last three hours of my life trying to make a vegan cookie in a waffle maker. And here's the proof of all of my 
my failures right there, big plate of failed Valentine's Day cookies. So the problem has been that the top part of the cookie is sticking to the top part of the waffle maker. The good news is that I'm kind of at a crossroads. I did get one that came out pretty cleanly. And you can see there, it's really cute. The little indentations, the little X's and the hearts and the O's, they come out so nice and cute. The only problem is this thing is hard as a rock. So what I did to get to this point is it was four minutes cooking, 10 minutes unplugged, one of that like unplugged cooking time, and then two minutes just resting in the waffle maker and then I pried it out and there it is. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm still not giving up hope. I'm gonna mess with that unplugged cooking time and see if I can't get a cookie that will still pop out of the waffle maker, but is still somewhat soft on the inside so it's more like a cookie. So I will not let this Valentine's Day project get me down. Please wish me luck. Fast forward another hour and I think we have a winner. All right, so the blue light just went off, so that means it is ready to cook and I'm gonna give top part of spritz, bottom part of spritz, extra on the top because that's my trouble spot. And then in goes one and a half ounces of cookie dough. And then we're just gonna push down like that, just a little bit, not press down really hard. And now four minutes cooking like this, four minutes. After four minutes of cooking, I unplugged the waffle maker and let the residual heat cook the cookie for seven minutes. And now is the moment of truth. So I'm going to open slowly. Come on. Ah, there we go. And look, the, you can see it's still kind of soft. So that's good. Now, I don't even care that the thing is not a full circle. Who? cares as long as this cookie is not completely burnt, which it doesn't look like. I know it looks brown on top, but this part is still nice and soft. I'm not gonna just take this out of the pan yet. I'm gonna let it rest for about two minutes right here in the maker. Hmm, okay. I shimmied it out of the waffle maker with just a knife because I wanted to eat it while it was warm. And it's good. It's it's perfectly fine. It's a little bit more caramelly on the top because of the way we cooked it, obviously, with the, the waffle maker because of the direct contact. So it doesn't taste exactly like a sugar cookie, but it is good. And I could totally get behind this if you put a big old scoop of vanilla ice cream on top with some strawberries or, you know, it would even be better. Um, and this would be a great Valentine's treat. It would be like some whipped cream on top with some strawberries. That would be great. So, whew, thank you, St. Valentine. Finally, a vegan cookie dough challenge met. Mm, I was done. Thank God. If I am anything, I am persistent, and I just had to try one more thing. I thought at the last minute, if I bumped up the amount of cookie dough to two and a half ounces, that's two and a half balls that come in the Sweet Lawrence packages, then that might make a difference. And you know what? It did. I still did the four minutes of cooking, unplugged it for seven, and it came out perfectly. I know it still looks a little dark, but the texture is absolutely perfect and it's really delicious. That nice caramel, caramelly flavor is still there and man, after a day of this, to finally get to here, ah, now that is a Valentine's for Crunchy Scott for sure. So that nobody gets mad, I feel like I should point out that neither Sweet Lawrence or Dash ever claimed that their products could do what we just did today. And I know the journey was long, but we did get there, so it's kind of fun. We can do it. And actually, look, their packaging looks really good together, doesn't it? Anyways, the big question is, would I do this again? And I will try to not let the fact that I've spent the entire day on this project color my answer, but a resounding yes. Now that I've got a cookie that not only looks good, but it tastes good, of course I would do this again, and I hope you do too. One big cookie for you, because you deserve it, or a cookie that you can share with your own Valentines, whatever the reason.
Show me some Valentine's Day love and like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I really do hope you all have a wonderful Valentine's Day. A vegan Valentine's Day.